Hi, and welcome to Bremster Puzzles and back to the World Puzzle Federation from 2015's Round 6, which was set by the Czech Republic. This is classic Sudoku 4, and they're getting a little bit harder in difficulty, but these ones seem to be ramping up less than in previous months. This puzzle was set by Jakub Hazdera. I've probably got the I've definitely got the pronunciation on that one wrong. And this is still only a 25-point puzzle. So um, I've explained how the points work back in the beginning of this series. So hopefully, um, if you need to understand how they work a bit more, um, go check out the first video in this series. I don't want to keep covering over and over and over and over and over. Um, but what I should cover over and over in case people are finding this is the rules of the puzzle, because being able to solve the puzzle is something that should be definitely contained within this video. So in the description below, you will find a link to this puzzle, as well as a link to the World Puzzle Federation archive and all of the information they provide. So let's have a look at the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. That's it. I'm gonna restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this one a shot. Okay, so we've got a lot of even digits at the top and a lot of odd digits at the bottom. So these are one, three, five, seven, nine. So I can actually say these are two, four, six, eight. I'm wondering, okay, so this is a nine. I could see because I was looking at odds that nine had to go somewhere. Now two has to go in one of these two because I'm looking at odd, but this are actually, this becomes a six, eight pair because of the six, eight looking across, not being able to go into here. And none of these are six, eight, this is six, eight. So this is actually two, four and I'm getting some pairs. Right, so four has to go in one of those two, but the six, eight puts six in one of those two. I'm not going to odd even color this one, but if this was a hard Sudoku, then you could potentially start coloring odds and evens to see how things would match over. You sometimes need to do that in um, in classics, but it's quite rare, but you could potentially color because you would know that there's only four evens and five odds in each row, column, or box. So if you find patterns where you've got those forced, such as this row here, where we've got all of these, if I was to color all of these as a particular color, I normally use yellow as odd, I could stop thinking about any of the even digits in those cells, and then particularly get some odd even um, coloring happen in other locations, allowing me to eliminate digits without actually having to think about those digits. It can really help, but I'm not sure that's going to be needed on this puzzle. We'll see how we go. But I can see three and three, of course, makes this three because these are all the odd digits. Now I can see one has to go in one of these. Um, and I can see five has to go in one of those two, but this five looking up says that's not the five, this is the five. So these are one, seven, and nine. So this is just seven or nine. I do need to put a three in here, but it's in one of those. So that's not that helpful, at least not yet. Okay, so it actually feels like all the action is happening in the middle because these are four, seven, and nine, and this one can't be a nine. I could be completely wrong about, oh, where's nine in this box? Because the nine can't go in any of those. So this is nine. This is a four, seven pair. And these are one and five. No, one and seven, one and seven, one and seven, not one and five, one and seven. For some reason, I said there was no five in this box. There's no seven in this box. So these digits are also known. They're two, six, eight. And there's no six there. There's no eight there. Oh, there's no two there either. So that's the eight. And this is a two, six pair. Excellent. So eight and eight are looking down, putting eight in one of those two. These are one, five, nine. There's no one or five in, or oh, there's already a one or five in column five. So I can take those out. This is one, five, and I'm not sure what to do with that yet. I... <laughs> I think I'm making okay progress without having to color, but coloring can be a very useful trick if you're finding yourself stuck. So now nine is in one of those two, but seven is also over here, but seven could go in any of those three. One is in one of those, three is in one of those. So that might give me a restriction on evens if I was to restrict where the odds could go, so which cells had to be even but I don't know. So for example, five, 
up here. Five is in one of those two. So this, yeah, these are all the even digits, but I don't have much of a restriction on those. One of those needs to be even. So either that's an eight or that's a two. One and five are in those. So this has to be a one or a five. Yeah, where's one and five in this column? I can't put one five here. I can't put one five in those cells or those cells. So this is a one or a five. So this is now down to a triple. I've got one, two, I don't have three, four, I've got five, six, eight, nine. So these are three, four, seven, and must contain a three, but the three can't be there. So this is actually a four, seven pair. That's kind of cool. That does put three in one of those two. That's nice. It's an interesting way of having to look at it as well. Definitely stepping up the difficulty a little bit, even though this is only a 25 point puzzle. So I've probably missed something, but again, that, okay. So four is in one of those two because the four is looking down saying four can't be there. I also know four is down here, but so these are all the even digits, right? So I've got one, three, five, seven, and nine, and this is two, six, and eight. So that has to be the four. And these are two, six, and eight. And that one sees two and eight. So that's the six, and this is a two, eight pair. There you go. That's something. Five is in one of those two by Sudoku. These are all odd now because they see two, four, six, and eight. And this sees one, three, and five. So that's seven or nine. This sees five, seven, and nine. So it's one or three. Okay. I do need to put a two into this box and an eight. And I can't put two or eight there or there. So this is actually a two, eight pair, meaning this can't be a three. This is the three. And these are one, seven, and nine, and I can't put one there. That's the one, that's a seven, nine pair, making that the four, that the seven, and that the four. Very nice. I am using odd even, and in a way I did not expect. I could have colored this puzzle, and I think it may have helped me, but I'm getting doing okay without it, so I'm cool with that. So I've got all of the even digits in this column, and I've got five and nine. So these are one, three, seven, and must contain a three. This is only seven or nine, the only digits I haven't placed. So nine is in one of those two. Okay, what are these? Well, this isn't a four anymore. These are two, six, and eight. Two, six, eight. So I've got the one, three, five, seven, nine. So these are all the even digits. Four has to be here because I can't put four in any of those. This can't be an eight, as I've said. So that's a two, six pair. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are three and seven. So this triple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are one, five, nine and must contain a nine. That gives me a one, five, nine here, which I could have seen with that two, six, eight if I'd looked at it a different way, but I got there in the end. I do need to put a two over here, but I'm not seeing what to do with that yet. I also need to put a three. Ah, where's three in this row? Because three has to be in one of those two and three has to be in one of those two. So three in this row, this is a hidden single, which I was talking about in the previous video. How do you spot a hidden single? Basically, where does three go in this row? Because even though I don't have any threes in this row the, uh, or in these boxes, I can't put three in any of those because then I couldn't put three in this column. I can't put three in any of these because then I couldn't put three in this column. So three has to be in one of those, but there's two threes looking up. So that is a three. It could be other digits by Sudoku, but if I made it other digits, there'd be no three in this row. So that is a hidden single. I'm not very good with the Sudoku terminology sometimes. I have to admit that, but mm. so that does mean two is down to two cells. And now I can do the same question in this column. 
Where is two in this column? Because I can't put two in any of those. There'd be no two in row two. I can't put two in any of those. There'd be no two in row four. So two is in one of those two. In fact, this is two, six, or eight for this row. Okay, I'm not quite there yet. So these are all even. Right, right. I've got the one, the three, the five, the seven, and the nine. So these are two, four, six, eight, but I've just proved they can't be two and that can't be four or six. So that is the eight, which takes eight out of both of those, making this the two, this the six. The two looks across making that the eight, taking eight out of there. The six looks across making that the two and that the six. This is beautiful. The two looks up making this the six and this the two. This is really nice. This column is missing its four, so that's the four. These, four and eight, which looks across making that the two and that the eight. I could have used the two for the same thing, but that's fine. I'm really liking this. I need to put a one and a seven up here. I'm not seeing how to do that. I don't like pencil marking three cells. This isn't a variant. Because I'm using odd even, it feels more like a variant Sudoku, but it's not. So there'll be just a pointing digit I I haven't seen yet. No, the question is, uh, where is six in this row? Six and six means six is in one of those three, but that's four and nine. That's a six, which looks down making that the eight and that the six. The eight looks down making that the four and that the eight. The four looks up making that the two and that the four. The two looks up saying that's not the two, so that's the two. I just removed the pencil mark of a five, so that's the five. These are one and seven. But these look across maybe? No, not really. What about these? Well, the five looks across saying that's not the five, so that's the five, because I've only been pencil marking two places. That looks across saying that's not the five. So five is now in one of those two. This is a one, three, seven triple. So I can't put nine here. I can't put nine here. So I can't put nine here. So this is a nine, which makes that a seven. The nine looks down, making that the seven and that the nine. The seven looks up, making that the one and that the seven. That takes seven out of both of those for multiple reasons, the one in the column or in the box. But the seven looks across making that the one and that the seven. The seven looks across making that the three, which looks across making that the one, which makes that the three. Either of those threes makes that a seven. The one takes one out of both of those. So the one, of course, makes this the five, which makes this the nine, which makes this the one. The one makes that the five and that the one. And that took me 12 minutes. I think I would have struggled to solve this one if I didn't use parity. So this is a really good communication from a puzzle 10 years ago about some of the tricks you can use. And I thought this was really well telegraphed. I've said in the past that I don't like classics because the setter rarely telegraphs what their intention is with the puzzle to the solver. And I find this is true for most people who create classic puzzles. This is an exception. Yakub um, uh, 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 has uh, has uh, I think the pronunciation was I don't have that right. Um, did a brilliant job on this one with communicating some of the concepts that you wanted to look at in this puzzle. Absolutely stunning. This may be my favourite classic of all of them that I've done so far. Possibly because I used a trick I know from variant Sudoku, odd even, to simplify the solve. I don't know whether it was needed or not, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. One more classic, I believe, before we get onto the variants, which is where I really start enjoying the puzzles a lot more. But I did love this one, so who knows? Thanks, everyone, for watching. And as always, good luck with your solving.